Hi there. Welcome to our lecture on meiosis and how this is similar and different to mitosis. Okay, let's just get right to work, shall we? So remember, this is uh, at any point you can go ahead and stop, take whatever notes you want, and we'll just continue down. Okay, so let's talk about chromosomes. Uh, the first is going to be homologous chromosomes. Now remember that chromosomes exist in pairs and cells and uh, homologous pairs are chromosomes from each of the parents. So basically what you see here is a chromosome and a chromosome and these are homologous chromosomes which means they can be chromosomes 1 through 22 and they're identical. Let's say this is chromosome number 1. So this would be chromosome number 1 for mom chromosome number one from dad, and they were, can be considered homologous pairs. The only exception is the sex chromosome, which are X or Y. So chromosomes one through 22 for humans are known as autosomes and are homologous, and the sex chromosomes are not autosomes. They're actually a separate set of chromosomes, which determine the gender. So in humans, we know there are 23 chromosomes for a total of 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. The gametes, the sperm and ova, will contain 22 autosomes, as I said, and one sex chromosome. There's their 23. Fertilization, or syngamy, which is the fusion of the cytoplasm, syngamy, results in a zygote with two haploid sets of chromosomes fusing together to make what we call a diploid, or twice the number of chromosomes in the nucleus. Most cells in the human body are produced by mitosis and only the gametes are produced using meiosis. Okay, so here's an interesting question. Do you think that the number of chromosomes has any relationship to the complexity of the organism? So if you take a look here, we have the pea plant at 14, we have the cat at 38, we have the puffer fish at 42, we have the human at 46 and the dog at 78. So it's pretty clear that the dog is more complex than the pea plant. I don't think so. Most likely their complexity is the same. It's just the number of chromosomes and how they're organized is unique to each of the species, but not necessarily have anything to do with its complexity or its biology. Okay, so even number of chromosomes are considered diploid. The word ploidy, meaning copies of the chromosomes. Diploidy, meaning two copies. Haploidy meaning half. All right, so a diploid chromosome number for humans is 46. The N is haploid, which means 23. 2 times 23 is 46. So female sex chromosomes are homologous, XX. Male sex chromosomes are non homologous. You have an X and a Y. So we've talked about haploidy being one set of chromosomes and diploid being twice the number of chromosomes. Most plants and animals are diploid, whereas only the egg and sperm, or the gametes, are haploid. So this is the overview for meiosis. It's broken up into two parts. Meiosis 1, the separating the homologous chromosomes, including the sex chromosomes, and then meiosis 2, which is very similar to mitosis, the separation of chromosomes by their chromatids and the splitting of the centromeres. So there's interphase which would have the same cell cycle, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, then goes into telophase 1 in a very short kinete cytokinesis, then it slips into prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2, and finally cytokinesis. All right, so let's go ahead and begin through the process. What is meiosis 1? It's basically the chromosomes will then align themselves and then split now they will not split equally and this is going to increase the genetic diversity of the organisms so in prophase one you have the chromosomes beginning to condense you have the homologous chromosomes pairing up into what we call a synapses and they're going to form what we call tetrads in which the four chromosomes line up together the DNA was replicated in interphase during the S phase. And where these chromosomes pair up is called a chiasmata. And this is a section where we have what is called crossing over. Uh, crossing over will be very, very important. I have a separate lecture for that. Pr 
chromatophase 2, the kinetic core is formed, chromosomes then move in towards the middle, and the spindle fibers begin to form. In metaphase 1, these tetrads or bivalents then line up, and the centromeres connect to the kinetic cores, and the homologs separate. They do not separate the centromeres, they're just separating the homologs. And in this case, you may not get, if the red is from the father and the white is from the mother, you may not get both cells from mother or father. So there's a 50-50 chance. In anaphase 1, those chromosomes are pulled apart. And at telophase 1, the nucleus begins to form, and then you have cytokinesis, and that's the end of meiosis 1. At this point, the two cells are functionally haploid. They have half the number of chromosomes, which is very different than what we had talked about in mitosis. In meiosis 2, there is no S phase, so there is no DNA replication. Because there's no DNA replication, those chromosomes now just form and move through the same set of stages as mitosis. So the chromosomes will align on the equatorial plate, at this point in anaphase 2, the centromeres will divide and the sister chromatid will migrate to each pole. In cell division, the new nucleuses are formed in telophase 2, and finally you get cytokinesis. So here's the overview. <clears throat> You'll notice you have one pair. This is the S phase. You now have identical sister chromatids, and these are homologous chromosomes. Then the homologous chromosomes separate in meiosis 1. They are functionally haploid, that is, you have one male here, the one female here, and then those haploid cells then segregate again in meiosis 2, where I take and split the centromeres, and I have four haploid cells. Let's compare mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis and meiosis are listed here. I'll let you pause if you want. And here's a graphic organizer to show you the same thing. And this is a great place for us to stop in comparing mitosis versus meiosis. So one of the major things that we're looking at is how meiosis and mitosis are different. And one of the major ones I want to focus on is this idea of a synapsis or crossing over between non-sister chromatids. And this is going to occur in prophase 1. This is one of the more important aspects of the key difference between meiosis and mitosis, and it's also the reason we have genetic variation. I also want to share with you another summary of what's happening between mitosis and meiosis. All right, thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and pause. So here is the example again, just without my picture. All right, that uh, concludes this lesson. We will see you next time.